Hi everyone, nice to see you. Hi guys. Um, we're back again. It's lovely. It's lovely to, to join you all. Um, wafts from the loft. That's us. But of course, we're not in our loft at the moment um, for obvious ages. reasons. It has been Nearly. too long, hasn't it? I mean, pretty much. I mean, we we were able to get back a couple of times, but basically, we've been zooming. It's been a year of year. Zoom of Zoom wafting. It's been tough, uh, which is terrible. Um, but so we, we we thought if if we're sort of forced to be a part like this, we should probably bring you something from an obscure house that no one's ever heard of. Um, something very rare and unusual. What, what do you think about that, Dan? Yeah, we, well, actually, <laughs> but you say rare, and, but like, I don't think we've, we've never talked about this house at all, really, have we? We actually we've haven't, never, have we, no. I don't think we've ever really spoken about anything from Chanel or Dior, Dior mm. at all. I mean, if you're, if you're new to our channel, Passing I guess references, we, maybe. Yeah, we tend to, I guess, our interests are mostly kind of the niche like bordering on the kind of like artisanal um, and the kind of vintage and there, there have there have been very few designer releases I mean I know this is from the the exclusive line so it's the more expensive line but it's still a major um, a designer house release from the in-house perfumer um, and I think it's easy yeah. for us to, to overlook um, these kind of releases I'm really glad we didn't Ooh, overlook absolutely. this one because it's bloody awesome <laughs> this is um, the kind of thing that we hope would would happen isn't it yeah i mean so let, let's just uh let's get, get a bit of the kind of business out of the way so it is uh le lion uh by chanel from the exclusive range it's um in the uk actually you can get it quite cheap 145 pounds so 75 mil for an edp so you know in niche terms it's not too bad at all so it's and it's by yeah. the uh in uh house uh, chanel perfume olivier Paul, uh, son of the great Jacques Paul, who did so many of the great um, Chanel fragrances in the end of the 20th century. Um, but even we were just discussing Olivier Paul, as well as his um, Chanel releases. You know, he did uh, Dior on the, the original 2005, D Dolce & Gabbana, the one, Gail Queer Beluga, Jimmy Choo, uh, Paco Rabanne and Victor's, Valentino Warmo, Van Cleef and Arpels, Midnight in Paris, Victor and Rolf, Flash Bomb, Spice Bomb, <laughs> You know, as well, well that's as a great name for a perfume. What? Why has no one made flash bomb? Flash, flash bomb. That's a great Flower. idea. <laughs> flower bomb. I but was that, getting so but excited. But that's a good idea for a perfume. <laughs> yeah. Flash bomb. Um, anyway, but it's been interesting because recently, or not so long ago, he's been Missia and Boy. The, these are references uh, to people in Coco Chanel's life. So he's really been going back to the Chanel. Um, heritage and this fragrance Le Lyon is not about a, a, a line in the literal sense um, it is so uh, Leon, Leo is uh, Gabriel or Coco Chanel's um, astrological star, star sign and if you if you do just a little bit of research even if you just google image search uh, line uh, Coco Chanel you, you'll see around her apartment she has lots of uh, statues and symbols of, of, of lions and it's in her jewellery and in her clothes and badges and, and brooches and things like that so this symbol is really uh, important to her when uh, I understand when um, her partner um, what's his name was it boy um, died um, that she went to uh, Venice um, yeah, boy, uh, when he um, when he died, she went to Venice, to Venice, and uh, the lion is the kind of symbol of Venice. You see it everywhere on flags and statues and churches and piazzas. Um, and understand this kind of you know began to inspire her, this kind of lion spirit that became important in the rest of her life. So it's a very important and significant symbol. Symbol. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about that. Let's talk about how it smells. So we both, um, we're work, working off samples. I haven't bought a bottle yet. Um, this was released, I understand it was released in the, in the Middle East um, last year, and then it's only just been released uh, in Europe more recently. But... Oh, it's such a good opening as well. Oh, <laughs> it is. I mean... I have some on a card as well. This, it, it is, it's impossible to smell the opening um without 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 thinking about um this little this little thing here um yeah Shalimar. 
actually that, that that that's an old X-ray. It, it, it smells more like more like the 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 EDP. Um, da, da, yeah. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah. Straight to um, mind to Shalimar. You, you, I mean, you definitely you definitely get that relation. Uh, these um, beautiful, beautiful bergamot oh. with this kind of like ambery kind of leatheriness, like oriental behind. You know, Shalimar, the queen of orientals, you are just, when you smell Le Lyon, you just get this, you're transported back, you know, whatever it is, almost 100 years to the, the great years of all those wonderful perfumes. But yet, totally. it doesn't feel like a dated fragrance, I don't think. It, it it just feels timeless. It feels like, you know, quality of this of this nature. It's beautiful. Sort oh. of transcends date and time. Yeah. The, the, the quality of that bergamot as well is fantastic. Yeah. And there's so I'm, much... I'm, I'm never a fan normally. I think bergamot, schmergamot... Yeah, you know, it's it's the opening of so many things, but I never, I never normally really notice it, but here I really do. I'm just going to say something which I felt a little bit when I, when I was trying this is, as we said, you know, we we a lot of the fragrances that we, we kind of talk about are from these um, niche and even artisanal, um, sometimes all natural um, houses, really really expensive wow 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 ingredients. Um, when you get these amazing amazing natural expensive ingredients you don't always get the level of perfumery that you're getting here, I don't think. I mean, I yeah. think he's obviously not working with the most expensive materials in the world, but he is one of the, 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 the greatest perfumers in the world. And there's so much elegance and beauty, but yet fire and body. I feel like already from the beginning, this is quite a bold... Um, you know, mm. this has got body and spirit and... and the amber already... is right there behind the opening. It's yeah. right there nestled, nestled up behind it. It's not yeah. a bass note at all. No, 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 no. It's straight already. It's right and there. it's, you know, it's one of my... Um, fa- labdanum is one of my favourite materials. And from about the minute one until about the 20th hour mm. of this you get labdanum, you get loads and loads of of rich labdanum. At the beginning, it's somehow kind of polite and it feels elegant and bright, like you're all dressed up at the start of the evening because you've got this sparkling bergamot and and, and other things going on at the front. But later, it turns more raunchy, I think. Oh, totally. Still, as 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 we're just Mm. experiencing here on the card, you, you still are reminded of Shalimar, but where it ends up, I think, is really quite different. It's much more... Um, raunchy, out and out kind of love yeah. to me. I think I, I think there's much more predominance of of the patchouli as well. I mean that yeah yeah, yeah. that with the labdanum takes it in a in a different direction. The shalimar is really about it's about the vanilla and the mm. and the slight the slight dirty sweetness of the vanilla and the amber tones. But yeah, it's quite subtle by comparison. I mean this this ramps it up to a, a huge. Mm. Magnitude. I definitely Not in get, a vulgar I mean, way at all. Just, I mean, just. It. I think ooh, we should kind of throw it in there. People have said, "Does it smell like Coromandel?" I've got a kind of Coromandel bottle here. Da, 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 da. I mean, it doesn't smell. I don't get. It doesn't smell like Coromandel at all. <laughs> it, no, it really no, no. doesn't smell anything like Coromandel at all. Yes, there's some patchouli in it, but yeah, but that, that's where the resemblance ends. So if you're looking for Coromandel, don't think it's similar. It really is not. Um, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. It's like a distant cousin, you know. It's it's that's as it just shares the material. But I love the, the the further it goes, I get this leather, I get mm. this raunch. It feels dirty. It feels it's still beautiful, but you know, this it's got that kind of dirty heart. Like yeah, it's got something and that really and does raunchy. that really does go on for days. Actually, I had this <laughs> yeah. uh, like a couple of weeks ago on a dressing gown. And it was still there, you know, days later. It, you know, it was really voluminous to the point where yeah. I would wear the dressing gown and then I would smell of it, you know, the next day in the shower. It, you know, it's really persistent. Yeah. And I if mean, you love it, if you love the smell as I, as I did, then you're going to be yeah. very happy to have that length. I mean, that's I the, 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 the thing I mm. find with, with, with labdanum is it, is it just has that balance of uh, sexy and raunchy and also very comforting as, as well. It yeah. feels exotic and yet familiar. And that's what I kind of get with this. It's, it's exotic and dangerous and yet familiar. 
because it has a roundness and a warmth, but then there's something labdanum, there's something in the middle of it, like it's just, just something that stops it tipping over the edge into kind of being too comfortable. It has just that little bit of danger. Yeah. Or like a, a person that you think you know really well, but they just have yeah. they have this one little thing that's just that's unique about them that no one knows, you know. And I think I think this really captures it. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> it, I mean, it could be a, again, it could be a long lost gallon. I've said that about a few things. Yeah. But uh, it, it it has that classical nod. This is a tribute to the to the perfume of the past. It does. I mean, and it feels like a massive a massive tribute to um to Shalimar and I wonder if he's you know looking back to to that period you know a hundred or so years ago with an obvious nod to it I mean I don't know if, if Coco Chanel if she you know wore and admired um Shalimar it's, it's interesting because Shalimar is so different to um like Chanel number five which is you know it's so bombastic with those aldehydes and, and white florals it's yeah. so like ah, in your face whereas Shalimar just feels like it's this regal uh, cloak, and that's what you get with Le, Le yeah. Lyon as well. Um, wow, I it's just so good. Yeah, it's one of the it's one of the best things we smelt. You know, apart from maybe yeah. the vintage things, it's one of the best new fragrances we smelt in a while. I'm really pleased that we have, mm. you know, taken some time to spend some time with uh, Chanel. But you know, it's it's a good, it's a really good house, and. It, you know, there are things that we never really talk about much, but like, you know, Ego East is is really a fantastic fragrance. Um, Chanel Paul Monsieur, I, I know it maybe doesn't have the greatest performance that in the modern version, mm. but it's really good perfume. You know, Queer de Russie as well. My God, that's a real masterpiece. But even in, in terms of the more I mean, more modern things, like the Cor Coromandel, that was always one. Coromandel where... as well, yeah. I remember, you know, soon after it came out, like passing through airports and things, and I just, I would always spray it. And I thought, one day, maybe I'll have a, a fragrance that expensive. You yeah, know, yeah. however many years later and however many bottles later. I, I still love Coromandel. I still find it magical. Oh, but it's brilliant. This. And you've, yeah. got the, you've got the sort of original there, haven't you? Yeah. The ED2. But I, I think Olivier Polge did the new version, didn't he? He did the, the Parfum, yeah. EDP. Mm. Which is beautiful as well. Anyway, I mean... That's so good. If you... Of course, if you love uh, 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 Shalimar, you, you're going to love it. I mean, it is a lot more expensive than Shalimar. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it, you know, given that, you By know, Shalimar EDP, you can pick up for 50 quid, you know, quite quite easily if you, if you look around the internet. So it's a lot more money, but it has got that just that labdanum and that kind of tenacity that, uh, that comes with it as well. Yeah, I do. I do think it's worth paying the money. It has real personality as well. You know, it, it's not just a really well-made perfume that's really, really exciting and nice. It uh, has a personality. It has a voice. It's not. It's not just pretty and, and delicate. It's big and bold. And, mm -mm. Right. Great. I mean, I so you know, so this we've <laughs> we've kind of challenged ourselves by you know by. Um, trying not to neglect these kind of like major um, releases because we can, you know, get this kind of niche snobbery. Um, so if there are any other kind of mainstream releases that we really should be checking out, let us know because I'm so glad we didn't miss out on this one. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we're going to make more effort in the future, aren't we, to, to sort of search these things out and explore a little bit more. Yeah. So why did they keep making this quality? Yeah. Amazing. There you go. Oh. Until next time, happy sniffing. See you later.